Good afternoon, Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this special Facebook Live rounding off a week-long mirror series on Britain's 14 million disabled people. Disabled Britain doing it for ourselves, it's called. Now, joining me today are actress Cheryline Houston, who some of you may know better as Izzy Armstrong in Coronation Street, and the award-winning disabled freelance journalist Rachel Charlton Daly. Good afternoon, ladies. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Miss. Um, I should point out I'm Fleet Street Fox, those of you who don't already know me. Uh, now, for those of you who've been following and those who haven't, uh, all week the Mirror has been running a special series of articles that were conceived, written and photographed by disabled people about the ups and downs that this growing demographic have to navigate in a world that's not paying us as much care and attention as perhaps it should. And I say us because in a very specific and limited way, as the Prime Minister might say, I'm one of those disabled people. I have epilepsy, a neurological condition uh, which can be mild or serious. It can kill you or it can just make you wet yourself. Uh, and it's completely invisible and it's therefore ignored by most people, even though it affects one in every 100 Britons. And despite the fact that I think that opening music very nearly induced a seizure. Now, on the plus side, people treat me like there's nothing wrong. But on the downside, there is actually something wrong. So, Cheryl Lee, you have the opposite end of that problem, almost, because being in a wheelchair, you, you tick the box, I suppose, what people think disability ought to look like. But does that also mean that people treat you like you can't do anything at all? Yeah, it's really interesting because I've had both sides of the coin, too, because I actually became a wheelchair user at the age of 24. Um, I became a pain sufferer at the age of 11. So I had... My, I mean, my disability is mostly invisible anyway because it's pain and chronic fatigue, um, fibromyalgia, all my skeleton dislocates, all my connective tissue tears. But it's the wheelchair that becomes the thing that people suddenly... It's really weird. As soon as they see the wheelchair, um, you do get treated... Well, actually, I don't think everybody does. I think it, it's a real good indicator of what somebody's like and what their perception of you will be like and whether you will actually get anywhere on, on a friendship or a social level anyway. Because if they're dismissive then, they're not going to be great further down the line if you need need to lean on them. <laughs> so actually, it's a really, you know, it's a quick, fast way of seeing what somebody's soul's like, I think, is the way that they uh, interact with you with a disability. If but only it, we could have had you in Downing Street a few times, Charlie. <laughs> could I have got in, though? That's the problem. <laughs> Could you, could you have got in? I think they've got a ramp, but who knows? Rachel, what about you? Have you had, um, do you find that sort of people noticing a disability makes you understand what their soul is like? Or you understand, it's it's almost a way of, a shorthand way of seeing what someone is? Do you know what? I am I use a walking stick and I use a, um, I use a roller um, intermittently. I don't use them all the time. And Obviously, my conditions are with me all the time. So I've got arthritis, I've got lupus. And it's only when I'm using my wheelchair or when I'm using my, my roller that people suddenly realise, even even people who I see every day, like walking my dog or round the streets. But I will I will get the question, like, even if I've seen them the day before and, I, and I'll, I'll have said, oh, I'm in a bit of pain today. I'm not feeling great. But if, I, if I'm also in that much amount of pain and I'm using my roller, which is helping the pain and means I can get out more and it's helping me I'll get what's wrong with you are you okay and I'm like yeah because yeah. yesterday I'm... you were up and skipping about Rachel weren't yeah you? <laughs> obviously <laughs> I was running down the street the day before <laughs> obviously your, your conditions obviously come and go and they mm -hmm. ebb and flow a bit do you mm -hmm. find as some people do that um or some people have reported that people treat you therefore like when you do have the walking aid that you're malingering in some way Oh yeah, I get treated like I get treated like I'm I'm letting it get me down. I and then uh, and that I'm uh, that I'm succumbing to my illness and that I'm that if I that if I was um, if I really put my mind to it and I got out of bed I could um, I could I could go about my day. I've been told that one before. Whereas you know that's not how it works. Sometimes you just need to rest and just. Just take your mind off it. That's yeah. uh, that's another good one. Just take your mind off it, you know. Stop stop being so depressed and just get out of bed. Yeah. But on the other end of the scale, at the same time, I've been told that um, I've been told that um, that what on the days where I'm having good days, because uh, like if I have a bad day and I've been having good days the, the last few days and stuff, it'll be well, you were fine the day before, you know, you were. Like, like you were, like what we, what we're just talking about, like, mm. oh, well, 
you've been fine. You know, I've I seen you on Instagram. You've been a so and so place. You've been you've been out for chips. You like you are you are fine when you're out with your friends. What's wrong now? Exactly. Yeah. Now, Catherine uh, is in the comments. Catherine, afternoon, Catherine. So I normally do these things in the morning, so it feels like it should be 9 a.m. before I'm doing this. Now, Catherine <laughs> says, it's bad when people think because you were okay yesterday, where that when you're on a bad day, you're just faking it. There mm -hmm. isn't an awful lot of sort of consideration that disabilities or medical conditions come and go. No. And disabilities are no different to that. They're not a permanent. It's not like you have your leg chopped off. It's something a bit different. Although mm -hmm. having a leg chopped off is also a disability. Now, yeah. um, this is what we've been doing in the mirror this week is about trying to make uh, disabled Britain a bit more kind of out there and a bit more um, raising awareness, I suppose. So get into the comments. Let us know your thoughts. Are you disabled? Are you not disabled? Have you had problems or people reacting to you differently? Um, have you had positive experiences, negative experiences? Let us know in the comments and the best ones are going to get read out. If you want to ask Rachel or Charlie anything, then feel free. Um, so the Disabled Britain series, this is something that the editor Alison Phillips uh, has wanted to do for a while. And so, Rachel, as I understand it, the features editor, Nick Webster, approached you and did what very few editors ever do, believe me, and asked what it was that you wanted he, and what other disabled people wanted. Yeah, he fully entrusted the features uh, the features uh, desk over to me. And I, I'm still in disbelief, to be honest. I don't know how he... Um, I don't know why you trusted us. And yeah, as you say, the, the best part of working with the Daily Mirror this week, uh, well, the last couple of months, because that's how long it's took to uh, truly get all of this out here, uh, has been just how much everybody has asked me. It's not something that like you'll know working in the industry yourself. It's not something that happens very often. Um, and no, yeah, very much an autocratic we yeah. want X. We want X. You need to do uh, this and make it's it. Very, it's, very, it it's been very much like, and and a lot of the time, even when they have like, um, this person who's being guest editor this week, it's in name only. It's never absolutely making all of the decisions. Everything has been run past me this week. Even even things like um, some headlines have been run past me when they thought, oh, is this going to seem a bit like we're playing too much on the trauma because they don't want to be doing that. That's that's mm -hmm. what we're not about this week. And that yeah. was something I never expected, you know, to be asked about headlines. I mean, you you never get to decide that when, they, when they're your own stories, you know. <laughs> no, tell me about it. Good Lord. The of horrible <laughs> headlines <laughs> I've had. <laughs> that it was the sub wrote the headline, not me. Now, mm. Sharon says, when people see me without a walker or my walking stick, they think, oh, you're cured. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, unless they happen to know this, you very this well. This is actually my uh, my friend's mum. <laughs> <laughs> we got our mates on. Hi, Sean. <laughs> at least there's at least a guarantee that a couple of people watching anyway. Uh, but how, what was it, Rachel, that you wanted to convey in these articles? What was it that you you wanted to do with it? Do you think that you did it? Uh, yeah, we want. But what we wanted to convey more than anything was the richness of disabled lives, and that disabled that disabled people deserve to be deserve to have their stories heard when it's not just inspirational stories and when it's not just traumatic stories or pitying stories we we have a full rich life and it's not always it's not always stories that it's not always stories that people want to hear you know so it, it is the things like it is the uncomfortable things like you need to change your attitude sometimes and stuff like that and and we wanted we wanted to fully change people's opinions of disabled people you know so we wanted to like the thing we've been saying a lot this week is we don't want your sympathy we want your empathy and that is what we wanted to get out of it more than anything yeah a bit of understanding yeah uh, just understand like was... us more you know just listen and and don't don't jump to conclusions yeah um right so sharon says caroline is with her but she doesn't have facebook so but she's thanks for having a lovely little up. chat yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ian says this is a really important conversation i'm interested <laughs> in access to events particularly cultural events and learning from the covid experience which organizations are continuing to provide online access to people who can't attend in real life who isn't who should be Jerry, do you know arts mm. is your end of things i suppose to some extent yeah, I think it's definitely opened the arts up, but I think it'd be great if um, more carried on doing that because actually, even before COVID, you know, there's many of us who were um, 
isolating at certain times or couldn't get to certain places, particularly because of fatigue, etc. Um, and I remember Francis Ryan at the start of this and The Guardian wrote, you know, we've disabled people have been prepping for COVID all our lives. And what COVID did, Jillian's incredibly right, is that it opened up our cultural organisations to people who could access it all over the country which means you know and being able to see um events online ex exhibitions online actually means that culturally we're sharing more creativity amongst our among society mm -hmm. which is really important and that's the thing about access uh, everybody always panics about access for disabled people but as soon as you implement access for disabled people it benefits everyone and that's what's really exciting about access and um, it's like at, at Corrie, we have um, step-free access all the way around the cobbles now. There's a cobble-free route. Um, but that's brilliant for people who are wearing high heels. That's brilliant for cameras, for dollies, for people. You know, we have um, uh, electronic doors, which means people who carry heavy things, elderly, uh, uh, older members of the cast, etc. It's just the thing is, people think access is this big thing you have to implement for disabled people. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because we're one in five people, and we should all be included, and that—that's where I think the problem is. It's a mindset shift, and we're we're all standing on the shoulders of of prejudice from the generations before us. So we've all inherited this way of doing things, and actually, it's going to take a bit of conversation and a bit of bandying together to go. Let's just do things differently. Let's include everybody, because if you include everybody. That's a much nicer time for everyone. There's much more brains involved. You, you know, people give different influences, which wouldn't have had it without 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 doing that. So, yeah, I think there's a there's a way of. If, I I I advocate for everything you do. Please figure out how you can make it accessible for people, either through a hybrid way, um, online, or um, you know, particularly in the in the space as well. How do you make it accessible for everyone? That's the problem. Disability needs to be on everybody's agenda when they're thinking of doing something, and that's what we're not doing at the moment. Yeah, and Rachel, what do you, do you think that when um, it's sort of suggested, I suppose, to some organisations that they make things more accessible, and that uh, then they make things more available to people who are less able to get around, perhaps, whether that's because they're older or in a wheelchair or whatever, that there's sometimes people who go, well, that means I can't get in there, or they're getting favourited, or they're, they're getting preferential treatment to me. I mean, it makes me think of Noel Gallagher going oh, backstage at Glastonbury and showing my past mate I want to get everywhere because the, the disabled have got the best access to the stage well, it's absolutely ridiculous isn't it because you yeah. already had the access it's just giving us the access that you also had you know like it's not that it's not that we're taking any access away from you, you no, it's not like anyone keeps Noel Gallagher away from Glastonbury is it no one says no Ga no one exactly. can't come to the gig mate mm-hmm it's not it's not like anybody was stopping him from going to a different VIP section you know yeah. like there, there were many VIP sections that he could have gone to he just wanted that one because he thought oh it's the one with the best view but he didn't see he didn't see what how hard it was to get into the to get into the disabled section you know he didn't realize that you have to that you have to ring up like months in advance and try and get those tickets and that and that there were only a certain amount of those tickets you know like he's he's seeing it as a perk, but he's he's Noel Gallagher. He can get into any gig he wants. Yeah, just little people. There are only limited spaces for disabled people to get into gigs. Yeah, and he's never had to jump through the hoops, perhaps, of having to prove that he's got a right to do and, something. And that's the thing. That, a lot disabled people. Yeah, like you're saying, disabled people have to prove that they can get into those places. Noel Gallagher goes, "Oh, I've got this pass. I can go into this place." It's like. No. <laughs> yeah. And also, also, festivals are far ahead of many other places. Do you know what I mean? How many restaurants, bars, theatres has he been to which he couldn't get into because there were steps or, you know, and actually that that was about equ equality. And yeah. also the problem is disability. Disabled people have been made as an other or a they or as a group you can pick on, as um, a group that it's okay to pick on. And that's what happened there. Sorry. Yeah, I think a lot of people were talking about festivals, but there was there was still that awful stuff that happened at wire, wireless festival for disabled people. There was really bad disabled access at wireless festival, and that, and they could and disabled people weren't able to uh, have the same amount of access that they'd been promised and that they paid for the tickets. But if Noel Gallagher had gone to wireless festival, he would have been able to get into it fine, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know, would he? 
you know, mm. I don't think Neil Gallagher's got quite the same access problems as other people do. Now, Catherine yeah. says, I've got fibro, and so many people think that when I'm on a bad day and it's so bad I can't get out of bed, they say I'm just being lazy and I should get out more, which is mad because I struggle getting out because of my health. But because it's an invisible illness, they don't understand. It's these invisible disabilities as well to some extent, which... Um, we're hearing more about, as we should, but there's people with stoma bags, people with fibromyalgia, people with epilepsy, people with perhaps heart conditions who, you know, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't have it tattooed on our forehead. This person is disabled. Please don't flash your lights at the special epileptic person or anything mm -hmm. else. But you, you kind of have to do, I don't know, um, do you have to do more when, you're, when your disability is hidden in a way to... Mm -hmm um to tell people you need that help or do you have to do just as much when you when your disability is you know signposted by a chair or a roller I feel like I get treated a lot better when uh when I've got uh when I've got my when I've got my um when I've got my walking stick or when I've got my roller I mean it it it, it goes both ways you know I've definitely uh, I've definitely had bad experiences when I've also been using my stick and my roller, but I, it's harder to explain an illness that um, that makes you feel a bit that that makes you feel a bit tired and your joints hurt a bit and you can't work when it's sunny without people thinking you're lazy because those are just the prejudices that will always exist in society because that's what we've been taught, yeah. you know. But at the same time, I've also gotten on a bus with a walking stick and because I'm quite young old people have gone well these people are these spaces are for disabled people and I've had to physically pick my stick up and go yes that's why I'm sat here <laughs> yeah things have changed a bit over the years as well I suppose with more disabled people living longer living yeah. better lives thanks to medical advances and perhaps some of the old generation aren't quite so used to seeing people uh, of a certain youth or a certain vintage doing certain things because it's those things that didn't used to happen uh, uh caroline uh using her mum's account you cheeky man says able people need access too i need a ramp because i can't do the stairs but someone uh who has to needs the stairs because they can't climb the wall instead we've all got access issues right we've all got accessibility options in our own homes if you've got a set of stairs to get to your upper story it's because you needed access it's literally just a case of giving everybody else the same politeness i suppose same consideration um nicole says i'm so glad to see this coverage and insight coming from people with lived experience and knowledge um thanks nicole uh now cherry i suppose the question is another friend of mine <laughs> all of rachel's mates are on um, do, you, do you think, Cherry, that this kind of series, this kind of, um, I suppose, attention from a national newspaper, is that going to make the kind of difference that, that we need it to? Um, yes, as in because you, the Mirror have committed to this being an ongoing conversation until it's changed. Um, I don't think, I think, yes, it, 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 it's a brilliant way of highlighting it, but there's so much that needs to be done. There needs to be in-house training. There needs to be across all newspapers. Um, and I just mean that because we've got rather there's a there's a bit of a legacy of, of terminology that needs changing and, and an opinion mm -hmm. and a difference of the way um, disabled people are viewed because often we're othered. It's like that at the start of the pandemic, often in all the news newspapers and in all the media, they were going, oh, it's just, it's just the disabled and the elderly who will die. Just, you know, it, it's that or the, or the othering. And, and the thing is, I think it needs to be, disabled people need to be employed throughout all, all media. Uh, disabled people, it, it needs to be a lot more of ongoing conversations because I think people don't understand the nuances because, you know, we're inheriting all these opinions the way that, you know, quite often disabled people, uh, when written about, if it's nothing to do with their disability still covering their disability quite a lot mm -hmm. um the fact that um there's this opinion that people seem to be on benefit quite often and, and benefit fraud and mm -hmm. i think i've had a lot of benefit fraud verbal attacks thrown at me when people see me stand up out of my wheelchair even though i'm working mm -hmm. um but the thing is, with benefit fraud, the actual fraud of disability benefits is 0.075%. It's not even 1%. It's not even near 1%. You know, it's so far removed. And yet that's the massive label that's put on disabled people because there's this fear around disabled people for some reason. Mostly, I think that fear is because there's a fear of getting it wrong. 
Um, but also the problem is because we've always been other, because we've been locked up for so long, you know, it's only 40, 50 years since we actually got out of institutions that the, our equality hasn't been, it's only a couple of generations time. Hopefully we'll all be seen nice you know the thing is the quick fire way of changing these things is through the media mostly it's through the media it's through getting our terminology right it's through having having conversations and ensuring our representation and lived experience is used in the media and in the written form particularly because the way people society pick up on what we're taught and the media is a great educator in that and if if the media seem to mimic us or mock us or belittle us or accuse us of things that's how it's done in society. Um, mm -hmm. you know, and and disabled um, crime, hate crime, is, keeps going up and up and up, yeah. which is terrifying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, shouldn't, it doesn't need to be happening, any of it, really. Uh, I'm trying to make a fuss for puppy at the same time I'm doing this. <laughs> it's like to come in and start chewing my daughter's pens right now. Uh, now, Josh says, I'm awaiting a tribunal date for my daughter. has many disabling hidden illnesses, including ME. She was reassessed for PIP over the phone. After Over the phone? After five years, she's worse now and has been refused her benefit. I asked for support from my local MP. He's not interested in disabled people and says he cannot help by lending his support. Oh, he literally him. can't help by lending his support. And um, say people vote, you might want to remind him. I just don't care. I just It's just the lack of how little like MPs have showed how much they care, especially during something like the pandemic, as Shirley said, you know. Like all of these things they could have done to protect disabled people during the pandemic, and they just, they just yeah. haven't. It's just I think almost for political reasons during the pandemic, there was this urge to say, "Well, the people that are going to die, are the ones who are going to die anyway." Yeah. So it's not really a death that we need to it count. Was, so was, you know, political reasons trying to bring it down. But there was evidence. Uh, who, oh, sorry, sorry, you go, Sherry. Please. Two thirds of the people who died from the pandemic through the pandemic are disabled. Mm -hmm. We had do not resuscitate put on us if we were in hospital. Mm -hmm. I was in hospital, I had do not resuscitate put on me. They didn't tell me, yeah. Do you know what I mean? What who says our lives are of less value? Who, where is this judgment coming from? And that's the problem, and that's why it needs to be changed how we're treated. Mm -hmm. In our media, has a great way of doing that if our stories are told. in in, through lived experience then people will start understanding more because actually we are seen as other and we are seen as as, as collateral damage which well, we beings. do you know what that's exactly why i started the unwritten my publication because because it was during the pandemic like in a time when disabled people should have been listening to listen to that i was being told that as a freelance journalist that stories about stories about disabled people and how many people were dying and how many people weren't getting support weren't newsworthy and I was like if this isn't newsworthy now when is it going to be newsworthy you know like yeah. when when are people gonna care and want to publish our stories like if yeah. it's not going to be at the time when when we've basically be, been told you're gonna die get over it you know yeah. well also, like at the start where were the BSL interpreters where was the Easy yeah. Read Guide? I mean, at Cory, we helped um, Lancap build the Easy Read Guide. This is why is it not in policy? So the fact is that people in in our country get information in different ways, and that wasn't sent out to those people when when it was a live or die situation, you know. And and they sent back people into care homes, particularly with learning disabled people. Yeah who had COVID, you know, put COVID back into those places and into, into older people's, you know. So it was, yeah, just the lack of care and respect shows that lives don't matter, which is a bond. Yeah. Now, Marie says, considering the lack of visibility from the Minister for Disabled People, it sadly doesn't shock me that MPs don't care about us. Now, Marie, as soon as you wrote that and the question came up, I thought, who is the Minister for Disabled People? Mm -hmm. Bear in mind, I read all the newspapers every day mm -hmm. and I pay a great deal of attention to this stuff and I haven't got a goddamn clue. Apparently, our producer, Ed, tells me in the chat, is someone called Chloe Smith, but she may have resigned in the last 48 hours, so who knows? But she only became the minister last year. There was somebody else during the pandemic. I can't remember his name. There was somebody else during the pandemic and he just wasn't visible at all during the pandemic because he didn't care either. No. What, what, yeah. 
what on earth? I mean, what does it do? What, do they, what does the disabled minister do if, they, if they're not looking after disabled people? And they're not disabled. They're not a disabled person, obviously. Exactly. Well, Ter Therese Corby is the Minister for Secretary of State for Work and Pensions. She spends, she's spent most of her time defending Boris Johnson rather than mm -hmm. actually looking after anybody who's got I mean, problems with their PIP or something. Now, mm -hmm. as you might imagine... The, uh, the stories that we've had in this series, they're as varied as, as disabilities are or as actual people are. So we've covered the deaths that have been caused by the disability benefit system. We've had a mum who had to sell the family home to pay for cannabis oil for her daughter who had intractable epilepsy, couldn't be treated any other way. Uh, we had a first person piece from a visually impaired person who described being grabbed and dragged across zebra crossings against her will and sexually assaulted in public. Uh, the cost of living as a disabled person and how it's all being affected as well by fuel poverty and other issues. Uh, Cheryl Lee had her own article about the problem of dealing with other people's attitudes. So, I mean, you said it was great that the Mirror's doing this, but I'm going to be critical about it because I, those things should be in the papers anyway. They should. They should be. These are stories that I've been trying to get published for years. You know, these are these are the things that these are the stories that we've been that disabled people like myself and many other great disabled freelance journalists and we're freelance for a reason because we can't work in we can't work in typical offices you know yeah i've been trying to get published for years and years and years and it's only now that we're finally starting to get listened to you know yeah. Now, Catherine says uh, the need to legalise cannabis. It's been proved to help a lot of disabled people's disabilities. The government doesn't want it to. I think that's a whole different issue, Catherine, but it's obviously something that still needs to be discussed and talked about. Um, I'm not I used to be a, an on the road news reporter. OK, so uh, drinking more than I ate. Uh, not water either, um, getting last minute plane dashes to go to the other side of the world uh, and then having dysentery when I got there and rushing up country, speaking to people, rushing away again, constant stress. Mm -hmm. And even if I didn't have a child and didn't quite enjoy being freelance now, I couldn't do that job again. I absolutely mm -hmm. couldn't. I've only ever had a couple of seizures in my life. But the stress of that job and that kind of living my neurologist said to me last time I had a CG, you just need to live more middle-aged life. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, I didn't actually really mind because <laughs> <laughs> quite liked the idea of being a bit more middle-aged a bit sooner. As far. I love being freelance. I could never work in an office. It would be rubbish now. But I genuinely, I couldn't do the thing which would give me a staff job, a pension, mm -hmm. all that job security and, and protection and from being fired and stuff like that. So I have to do the stuff on the off the cuff as it were same as you to some extent but but there's so much working from home like the, the pandemic has proven exactly. how much working from home works but they just don't want to give the jobs they don't they don't want it to be become a permanent thing as much yeah because, the, because there's less chance of there's less chance of being able to watch people i suppose that's well, I the, think that's a logical reason no but there's there's also there's I think able-bodied people are going to realise this is a better way of living. Mm -hmm. People who haven't had their Very first year yet are going to go, do you know what? I do get to live a more middle-aged life and that's actually quite cool. I get to wear slippers all day. <laughs> I <love laughs> it. It's like like I, still, I still get dressed and stuff because I walk my dog, but honestly, you're like getting to have a cup of tea when I want to. <laughs> getting yeah. to sit on my nice sofa all day. <laughs> you can't get someone else to make the tea for you, at least in my no, house. That's I the one, that's the one day. That's the one downside. I'm the person that makes the tea, but you, but you know, just getting to work like around your around your actual life, you know, like so you can do. I mean, housework's not the most interesting thing, but getting to do the housework at the same time whilst you're living around your life. Yeah, exactly. Now, if you want to read some of the, the articles that the Mirror's been covering this week, okay, they're in the comments. There's some links to them in there. They're really fascinating, and I recommend reading through them. Um, but. One of the things that really grabbed my attention when I was reading this stuff during the week was the fact that if you wanted to have the same number of people in Parliament, in the House of Commons, that were representative of the population as a whole, I mean, goodness knows what the figures would be for women and people of colour and everything else. But if it's just disabled people we're talking about, you'd need 130 MPs. OK, there are 40 really disabled people in the country. You need 130 MPs. That's just over a sixth of them would have to be disabled. Mm -hmm. How many do you think we've got? Five. That's five, five. That, at least that are openly and sort of declare they have a disability of some sort. So, I mean, Charlie, from when you went on Corrie 
you must have had a, a certain reaction from the public and from, I don't know, from, from other people or parts of the media because you were the first genuine wheelchair user in the soap. What difference do you think, you know, that kind of representation of seeing someone in public life, whether it's on a soap or in Parliament or on the news, what difference does it make? Oh, it's massive. It's phenomenally massive. I work quite a lot with disabled young children and I was working with this um, in in the local disabled school um, doing drama and stuff. And the teacher said to me that, you know, because the parents had seen me be representative, they, they she could see the altered shift. Because the thing is, people change their expectations of people if they see people as role models. I mean, there was no role, role models. There's hardly any, still hardly any role models for our disabled young people. And you always need to be able to see yourself reflected back. And I think it's re- what Corey's done is 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 really massive landmark. But they also didn't make it be about much about disability. It was about somebody living their life. And that's yeah. where that's really key because then you've been seen as an equal. And, that, you know, we need to see a lot more of us in our on our screens, in our media. And then, you know, because we're there. We, if you look around in society, we're there. But just for some reason, we've been, we've been shut out and put out. And, and we've got a lot to offer. Yeah. And it's worth remembering, I think, all those people who might be watching this who don't feel they have any kind of disability. It could be you. All you've got to do is be walking on the road and a car comes along. And that's you. You're you're the one of those fourteen million. You, want, yeah. you have an infection. You could have a fungus. That's it. Game mm-hmm. over. So the other things are going to change. But Rachel, one of the things that um, uh, Nick was talking to me about about this series was this idea of of not doing anything about us without us, and this idea of a, a new social model so that Britain actually had a slightly healthier attitude towards mm-hmm. people who are disabled. Tell me about that. What does it kind of mean? So the social model of disability looks at the way we're not disabled just by our medical diagnosis and stuff. It's more we're, we're disabled by the lack of access in society. So, you know, obviously we're, obviously our conditions are what make us disabled. But there's also the fact that we can't get into buildings and we can't do the same things that you can do because of all the things that are blocking us and the attitudes to disabled people and stuff. So if those changed, which is what we're trying to do this week, and if there was better access and if there was more opportunities for disabled people, then we would be on a lot better equal footing. And that's what needs to change. Yeah, I can recommend anybody who wants to know a bit more about it's like just try to go around a public transport system with perhaps a dog that doesn't want to go on the escalators. Yeah. Or just with a, let's say, you know, with a skateboard or something. Mm-hmm. See if you can do it without getting off your skateboard because you can't. I didn't, re- before I had my diagnosis, just trying to go around the London Underground with um, a dog who didn't want to go in the escalators. Mm-hmm. You, I had to find out where the lifts were. Oh, I had no mm-hmm. idea how far they are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when you're in central London, how impossible it is to get to a station that's got mm-hmm. the lift in the first place. Obviously, we had the article from uh, Dr. Hannah Baron Brown this week as well about trying to get around the London Underground and how in- inaccessible that was, which uh, is not fun because, uh, mm-hmm. for all they they're claiming that the Victoria Line is a lot more accessible, they haven't been a lot to the rest of the tube. You know, that's one line. What about the rest of it? <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, disabled people aren't supposed to travel before nine in the morning. You don't have a job. You got you want nowhere to be. Uh, why would I you mean, want to go on more than one train? Yeah. yeah, it's one of the exactly. biggest cities in the world. Why? Why would we? Why would we need to get around it? You know. Yeah, and, <laughs> and other cities in the country, other than the capital, places like Manchester and Birmingham, that have got good tram networks. Yeah, far far better. Uh-huh. And, uh, like, like I'm, I'm from the northeast, and the and the town of Weymouth Road system, most of it is is got has got a uh, I would say pretty much all of it has got um, has got lifts, yeah. and it's just so easy to do. I don't understand why the I don't understand why the underground hasn't. No. <laughs> yeah, because it means changing something marvelous. That's why. Well, it, it was, um, and Livingston did it for the buses, and he was about to do it for the tubes, mm. and then Boris came in. Yeah. That's- well, mm. there we are. And well, R.I.P. Boris. Small violin for you there, mate. Uh, so uh, we're gonna have to wrap up. Ruin in the country even more. <laughs> <laughs> right, we have to wrap up a little bit now. Well, the, so the mirror is going to keep doing these uh, disabled Britain stories. Um, it's yeah. something that we've told Rachel that is going to be a constant. Is going to keep coming back to. I do think it's something that we we shouldn't. 
there shouldn't be a thing where any newspaper has to say we're going to do a special series on women yeah. or equalities or disabled people because it should just You're be never it's You're never getting rid of me now let's be honest no let's face it she's on the, she's got Nick's phone number and that's it yeah. <laughs> so, so keep checking on the mirror we are going to have more stuff on it thank you both of you for taking part and for all of Rachel's friends for tuning in um, and we will uh, have to keep up with you on developments as we go on the mirror's Facebook pages and everything else um, just very quickly I suppose we've talked about what um, how important it is that, that the mirror does something like this but what do you think it will take for the state to change because we can change readers opinions but the mirror isn't read by everybody and we can change the opinions of some people on facebook which is read by more people mm -hmm. but how do we change the state the nation is it that social model cherily what do you think i think you need to lead by example you need to keep having these conversations mm -hmm. i mean the social model was invented i think in the 80s um and it's still not mm -hmm. implemented um because i think if, if you start championing and start challenging other publications to do what you're doing you know lead and show that's exactly what Corey did and and I think there was a ripple effect there and I think the more people engage then the more more things will happen yeah okay what about you Rachel is that you agree with that yeah absolutely you just got to keep having these conversations and you've got to keep asking questions you know and you've got to no matter how uncomfortable things make you how, unco how uncomfortable you think it is to bring up these things especially as non-disabled people you've got to be the ones to help us do it you know it's not like we shouldn't be the ones having to come up to fight for it all the time yeah but yet by the same token we do we uh, do we were always gonna because <laughs> it wouldn't be happening so it's, it's a joint effort, a joint effort i think probably uh mm -hmm. right thank you everyone for taking part uh we're gonna have to cut it short there but um if you come back to the mirrors facebook pages i think especially next monday we'll have another edition of the news agenda for you to watch and whatever's happened to boris johnson by that point and, and there'll be more stuff to keep up with on the mirrors facebook pages about disabled britain thanks very much everybody bye bye bye, bye.